good morning, good morning. All right, so I'm gonna have my phone over here with my chat so I can see. Hope everybody's safe. Hope your family's doing good. Okay, um, I have, oh, hi, morning, Melissa. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple of prints, well, three different prints that I am looking at here to do for the library book tote. So I used to make these for teacher gifts a while ago and they were just great to just give, you know, in case they needed to have like a little, you know, library running tote so they can go back to the library, check out their books and then come back so the kids didn't have to actually take their book bag. And it was like a, you know, something that they would use for the classroom. So if any of the kids like, kind of almost like a hall pass, but with a tote bag. And it was at my kids' elementary school. They teachers loved it. It worked really well. It's just big enough for most books and it's literally a half a yard of fabric when it comes to the wide fabric like the 54 inch or one yard of fabric or regular fabric like a quilt cotton. So because I have lots of my own prints I'm gonna use one of those. So maybe you guys can help me choose. So um, I have obviously Harry Potter. I mean it's always a favorite. So the Harry Potter Marauders map I have a mermaid inspired print. So you guys can see that. And then I have a ocean themed one. This is starfish. So that one kind of coordinates with this one, but it's only one piece of fabric. There's no lining. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this with French sink. So it's very similar to what I did with Shinova um, yesterday and during her Shinova's um, captain's log when we, when we did the different pouches. So when I made this one, the Peppa Pig one, starfish. Okay, we've got both for starfish. When I made this one, I, I did a French seam and then this one I didn't. So this one's not gonna fray or anything obviously because it's plastic, but it just turned out really nice to have that French seam on that jelly. All right, so we have one vote for starfish. Let me see if we got any more votes out there for anything. If not, we'll do starfish. So you guys can see, starfish, Jaden said starfish and Rotter's map. Starfish, 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 starfish it is. Starfish. We love starfish. Okay. Um, so the other tool that I'm using today is my t-shirt quilt ruler or template. Template, not a ruler. Template from Joel Lily Creations. So I linked her, I linked her uh, business page on the description box. So if you guys um, need to know about that. I'm not sure if she has these on the website yet. Um, I may just have to tell her to go ahead and just, I'm okay with her selling templates because it's I call it my t-shirt quilt template. So it comes with the large one. This one is a 13 by 15, and then it comes with a 13 by five and a half and a 13 by eight. Um, and this is what I use to make t-shirt quilts. It makes it so much easier. One t-shirt size is this one. And then usually kids' shirts are a little smaller, so this one would work. Um, and, if, and then the smaller one right here is if they have more like, just like a logo or something on the, what is that called? It's just a logo right here. I don't know, I know it has a name, I just don't know what it is. But that's what I use for my t-shirt quilt. So I'm literally using the large 13 by 15. So the 13 by 15, I'm gonna put you guys down so you guys can see what I'm doing and then we can get started sewing. So the good thing is I already have a full bobbin because purple matches. So I was like, it's either this one or the brown and I have both. Um, the other thing you're going to need is two pieces of webbing measuring 26 inches long. I find that's just long enough for kids, but not too long. So yeah, so a half a yard of waterproof canvas or a yard of, of quilter's cotton straps. So any kind of webbing that is two of them at 20, 26 inches. All right, so let me push you guys down so we can go ahead and cut this up and start sewing because it's actually very quick sew. The last couple days have been actually very quick. Sew. All right, great. All right, so as you can see, I can literally get, if I wanted to make it just a little short, I can get a couple of them out of this, but I'm not going to. All right, so to use less fabric, what I do is I fold my fabric again. So I fold my fabric onto itself like so, and then the rest of it on that side is a bigger piece. So if I need to have one big piece for something, I have it. I don't have to try to worry about that. So now I'm gonna measure this out. And I don't want the salvage on this end, so I'm actually gonna scooch it over just a little bit more. It's just very easy, very fast to make. There we go. Now, if this was directional, you're wanting the 15 inches to be the, the tall length of it and the 13 being the width of it, just to just 
to let you know. So if this was directional, like the Marauders map, just to give you guys a reference, this is the this is the fifth this is the 15 inches and this is the 13 inches. So I would have my fabric like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. I would have it this way. So then that way, these are actually like little remnants that I had <laughs> left over. So um, that way, this direction here is what you're looking for the yardage wise. So really, you don't need a half a yard. You really need like 14 inches or so. I'm sorry, it's like 16 inches. So it's close to half a yard. Uh, this length wise, and you could probably get two bags out of that. All right, that looks good. The other thing I really like about this template is that it casts the center mark right here. So I can really see what my focal point is. So if I was using the Marauders map, just to give you guys an idea, and I wanted to really focus in on this particular, like if I wanted to focus on this little map piece, then I could center, I can use that center mark to just kind of give me a good point of reference. It's okay, that's gonna be my center mark. That's where I can cut. This is also how I use it for a t-shirt. I get my center mark before the design is, and that's how I squared up. And then the half inch seam allowance just lets me know anything inside that seam allowance is gonna get sewn into the bag, so I won't see that. So that's why I really love this template. Um, and Leslie did an amazing job working with me on this. And she, it was so fast, really. It was so fast. All right, so now I've got that. So now that it's all like this, I'm literally just gonna go around and just, just like that. Literally cut all the way around. Just like that. So technically I have enough for another one. And I think that would really be the case even when you do a quilt cotton, really. All right, so there it is. You can take that, put the template to the side, and this is what we have, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, because this is the little long edge, I'm gonna turn this over, okay? And it's as if this is the top and this is the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and sew down each side and across, okay? Yes wrong sides are touching it's supposed to be that way you're gonna want to do a very narrow seam line so if you can do an eighth of an inch that would be perfect if you can't quite navigate an eighth of an inch that's okay go ahead and use a quarter of an inch sorry i want to show you guys the best way to do it to get the best results <laughs> okay so i don't need this anymore so i can actually move my all right, let's go ahead and we're gonna do a joining stitch length. For me, that's three and a half. I just got notification that the hardware and the last of the fabric for the Kings of Horror box is on its way. Okay, so now that we've done that, okay, you are gonna need an iron. Whoop, whoop. I know, right, we're excited. We are gonna need an iron. You're gonna wanna turn this out right here. You're gonna wanna go ahead and trim away. We're gonna cut up more kits for the, right? So we're gonna take this, turn it. want to come in and so again but this time we're coming in at a quarter of an inch to encompass like to make sure that we're catching this seam allowance in here okay yes you can use an industrial so we have 10 industrials, we have 10 heavy duty domestics. So everybody gets to have a machine, but if you wanna share a domestic with somebody, you can do that. You can, you can have a buddy to share the industrial with. All right, so now we've got that sewn, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to make, uh, we're gonna make our top of our bag, okay? So 
This is a French seam. Yes, a seam within a seam is a French seam. So the first step you do is do it wrong sides together, then you do pretty sides together. So this is what it ends up looking like. So let me show you, Jaden. So now on this side, on the exterior, there's no expo there's no fabric sticking out or anything. It's all enclosed. So the seam is enclosed with another seam. So on the inside, it's completely closed off too. So if you don't have a serger, this is the best option for you. Um, a lot of times people will say pinking shears, but hold on, where was I thinking? Oh yeah, but pinking shears actually do not prevent it from fraying completely. It just slows it down from fraying as fast when you're handling it, but it will not completely stop it from fraying, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna put um, our handles together, and I will like to do like we normally do, where we <laughs> find our centers, right? We love finding our centers in bag making. It's like crucial, okay? So I found my center, and then I wanna go a total of three and a half to four inches, just depending on how, I like to kind of audition it and see. Because, you know, not every bag is made the same, so you kind of want to have to um, kind of like, okay, that looks good, that doesn't, you know? Yeah, I like the four inches apart. Yeah, a lot of times people say, oh, just use pinking shears. But as soon as you wash that, you're gonna start seeing it, like, unfray and stuff. It will slow down the frame for sure, especially when you're handling it and you're working with it and things like that, but it's not gonna prevent it completely. All right, so that's that one. Hold on, I got my marks, but I need to I need to turn this down one more time. I'm forgetting it's not already finished up here. So I'm gonna turn it down once by a, by a quarter of an inch, and then I'm gonna turn it down again, and that's when I'm gonna put in my straps. What I like to do is I like to do what's called a guide stitch. Um, I don't know if this is an actual technical term or not, but um, sometimes I some people have a hard time figuring out like what's exactly is a half inch, what is all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do three eighths of an inch. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is flip it down by three quarters of an inch or so. I say or so because it's not gonna be perfect. Um, so I'm gonna take it and flip it down. And you see how that's really good and consistent? That's pretty much what I always, always do. <laughs> it is, I'm telling you, one and a quarter inches. See, very close to one inch, very close. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put this in like this and sew it, okay? And then I'm gonna flip it up and sew it again, okay? So then that way it comes to this side. So you're not gonna see it from the other side, but you'll see it from this side. And this is when you need to have pins, not just, you I mean clips will work too, but that as well. There we go, I got clips to work, whoop, whoop, just like that. All right, so now the other side, the other side, I'm gonna flip it over just like that. So yes, yeah, so early 2024, we are gonna actually start offering like seamstress classes was the best I could put it. It's like we're gonna actually like, you can come in and learn tailoring technique and get a certificate to actually work at an alteration shop. So we're excited about that. All right, so now I'm gonna go through it. I'm just pulling this back. I can kind of feel where this is, but I knew that this is a one and a quarter. So I'm just gonna come in one inch and stitch all the way around at one inch. And then I'm gonna come back and stitch at an eighth of an inch. So it's gonna have two rows of stitching. Let me double check because no, okay. It is gonna have two rows of stitching, but the first line is gonna be this line here. I had to stop and think about it. It's been a while since I've made these. Um, right along the, the furthest edge. So one inch over all the way around. Then I'm gonna flip my handles and stitch again. Done 
just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna turn these up like so and clip them. But the best way to do that is to actually turn it right side right out. That's it. That's the bag. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's it. It's so fast. Like, you could literally crank this out, like, really fast. I mean, you just get these little things that are coming out from down here. But that's it. Bag is done. Super quick. Really fast. I mean, I think I think we did good. I mean, we voted in the beginning what, what choices we had. And I was like, all right, what we got? I'm literally from cutting to sewing while I'm talking and everything, 30 minutes. Um, you can definitely knock some of these out in like an assembly line and be like, boom. And if you wanted to, instead of the straps, you could just make, leave holes over here on this side and then do like a drawstring and it acts like a gift bag. Amazing, super cute, super fun. Just like that. Um, yeah, that's what we got. That's what we got. I think that's it guys. I think we're done. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend. And I hope that you guys create something fun. And if you make this, tag me because I would love to see what you got, how you guys made this and made your own little interpretation of it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.